the sovereignty of God. The sovereignty of God is motivated by his faithfulness and his love. Every time you are sick, trust in God. Even if you don't know what to do, trust in him. Somewhere, somehow, God will always come through. In John chapter 5 from verse 1 to 9, we saw the story of the man who was at the pool of Bethesda. The man didn't know anything about healing. He didn't know anything about anointing. He didn't know anything about scriptures. He was sick and he was there for 38 years. The only available solution, he didn't have the strategic and competitive advantage to receive it. And for 38 years, he was there. He wasn't he wasn't supposed to be healed by any other means. But somehow, Jesus strode to that place. There were many sick people. Jesus went to him and asked him, will thou be made whole? The man was not even reasonable enough to ask for his healing. When it was offered him, he was not wise enough to receive it. He started narrating to Jesus that I've been here for 38 years. When the angel stirs the water, I, 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 before I go in, somebody, they didn't tell you to complain. Will you be made whole? So he didn't have the intelligence to ask for healing. When healing was made available, he didn't have the wisdom to receive. Even at that, the sovereignty of God over, overrode it. And Jesus told him, carry your bed and go. Many times, people are healed because of God's sovereignty. God's sovereignty insists that healing should be available because God knows if you were to wait for them to be taught how to receive healing, they will die. The woman that was bent over, there was no record that she asked Jesus for healing. Jesus was the one who saw her. Jesus was the one who called her. Jesus was the one who told her, you are healed. And there was no record of thank you in that scripture. She didn't even remember to say thank you. After Jesus healed him, the Pharisees started fighting him. Even when the Pharisees wanted to stop Jesus, Jesus was still insisting on healing. If you understand that the sovereignty of God provides healing, how then can you be hopeless in your situation? The Bible spoke of a man who was born blind in John chapter 9. It said Jesus came and said he wanted to heal him. And the disciples started asking, is there no hindrance to his healing? And Jesus said there was no hindrance. And Jesus went ahead and healed the man. Do you know the man didn't say thank you? The man didn't know Jesus. When the man went to the synagogue and they asked him, how did you start seeing? He said, somebody laid hands on my eyes, told me to go and wash. I went and I began to see. Ah, uh -uh. who is the person? He doesn't know. When Jesus met him again, he quickly rushed and said, this is the man. The question I want to ask you now is, why don't you think God will heal you? When a man who Jesus was offering healing was not willing to receive, he was telling stories, Jesus healed him. A woman who didn't ask Jesus for healing and who didn't know how to say thank you, Jesus called her and healed her. A man who didn't even know Jesus, Jesus went ahead and healed him. How come you, who is a tongue-talking Christian, who comes to church to serve Jesus, can allow the devil deceive you that you will die in your sickness. There is such a thing called the sovereignty of God. The sovereignty of God overrules every reason that makes it impossible for you to be healed. Be it sin, be it ignorance, be it fear, be it human contradiction. The sovereignty of God makes God right and just to insist that although you don't deserve it, take it all the same. See, sometimes you go for a miracle service a miracle service. They lay hands on everybody and forget you. Because the man of God is a man. Sometimes you go for a miracle service. Everybody is healed. You are not healed. And you are wondering, why did everybody get healed but not me? It doesn't matter. God has not forgotten you. The sovereignty of God will insist that whatever it is that should stop that healing from reaching you, he will override it. And I speak over somebody tonight. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter the power stopping you from receiving. Tonight, you will see the sovereignty of God. While you are sleeping, 
they are having meetings about you in the shrine. They have summoned warlocks. They have summoned native doctors. They brought sand from Egypt. They went and fetched water from Indian Ocean. And they have gathered all the concoction. They have manipulated everything. When they now call your name, you won't appear. They don't know why, but when they call, you won't appear. It's not because you are praying. You are actually sleeping. But there is a sovereign one standing by your side. I know this man is weak. But if the Lord be for us, who can be against us? He said, who can bring any charge against God's elect? It is God that chooses. It is God that justifies. Who can bring a charge against God's elect? The Bible said, Balaam went from one altar, did the oblation. It didn't work. He went to another altar, did the oblation. It didn't work. When he saw that it was not working, he said, there's no enchantment against Jacob. There's no divination against Israel. He said, for the shout of the king is in their midst. They shout. They shout. And when the king roars, he said, he that sits in the heavens shall laugh. When he roars, when he roars, ah, oh, ayah, e kakora kafila kata, ah, barake talakina, beri kapa. Do you know, see, do you know the powers that gang up against you? You, this small boy, you, this small girl, kings in darkness wants you to go down. He said, why do the heathens rage? And the kings of the earth imagine a vain thing. He said, they have ganged up together against God's anointed. He said, but he that sits in the heaven, he shall laugh and he shall vex them in his sore derision. He shall scatter them. You see, there is the sovereign one. He is standing with you. It doesn't matter what the devil throw at me. I'm telling you, if I were to be hospitalized today, I won't change my confession. I won't give up. If I were to be dying today, I won't give up. He said, some died in faith. I will rather die in faith than to change my conviction. Because there is the sovereign one standing with me. If you were blessed by this message you just listened to, and you wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior, Kindly repeat the prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, and that He died for my sins and was raised from the dead for my justification. I therefore confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you just said this prayers, please send us an email at info at encounterjesusministry.org or info.ejmi.ng at gmail.com. You can also visit our website at www.encounterjesusministry.org.